so that's how you get in to the family. Uh, how, how do you get out? And when I do this class, I ask that, and someone inevitably will say, die. And I say, no, that's the wrong answer. The answer is you never get out of the family. Some of you hate that because you want to distance yourself, but you can't really. You never get out of the family. You're in forever. Uh, the, the, the spiritual family, you are reborn. You're born again until you get in. Never get out. Uh, how do these guys get in? Well, they're enlisted or they're volunteers, right? But over here in the business side, uh, they get in by being hired. Now, in our setting, that's how it happened. The board hired me, and I'm still here. And since then, I, I get to hire everyone else. The board hires the main man, and then I get to hire others, right? Now, we've said how they get in and get out up here. Over here, how do you get out of the cause? Well, you could have a, uh, uh, a discharge, or you could have what else? Die, someone might die. You're going to die for this cause. I like you, people. You're going to die for the cause. Over here, you get in by being hired, you get out by being fired or retired. Now, I, I hope that's sort of given you some idea about those three dimensions. And I just want to explore that ground a little bit more. See, the brother. Uh, he, he is the family member in God's family, brothers and sisters in God's family. The fellow worker, he is an employee in God's business. Now, the fellow soldier, he is a soldier in God's army. So we have the community, the cause, and the corporation. Community, we are God's family. Cause, uh, the old hymn used to onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. The Salvation Army know that. And, and, and corporation. We are doing business for God. We are God's family. We're God's family. I just want to rehearse that bit, give you the biblical background for all that stuff now. Uh, they intersect. You, 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 you get rid of one of those dimensions uh, to the detriment of the well-being of the church. Romans 8, 14 to 17, up on the screen. Here we go, here we go. Romans 8, 14. Let's, let's all do this one together. Here we go. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God, and by Him we cry, Our Father, the Spirit Himself, testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ. Isn't that cool? We're in the family. Lean over. Lean over the person next to you and say, We're in God's family. Come on, go and do it. And I'm just going to tell you, this is not just any old family. This is God's family. This is the family of the King of Kings. This is the royal family. You have been rubbing shoulders with royalty this morning here in the house of God. So in the, in the family of the King of Kings, so firstly, we are family, we are community. Secondly, we are cause. We are on a military offensive for God. Yes, there is the armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. We'll be doing that series on Sunday evening for you on Sunday evening, people on the full armor, uh, we're, we're, we're on a military mission to storm the very gates of hell. So we're not just about putting on armor and saying the bullets are coming, the arrows are coming and we're, we're under fire, uh, we're on the fence of Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and what? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell are not coming after the church. Gates are not on the run, on the move. You don't look down the road and say, here come the gates. The gates are not on the move. They're not after us. We are after the gates. We're going to knock down the gates of hell. We're going to claim back territory for the kingdom of God. We're on a, a military mission for God. So the soldier Epaphroditus uh, and all you fellow soldiers here this morning, what we need to do is let's fall in behind Captain Jesus and let's dedicate ourselves to his cause. Are you with me? That's where we're going this morning. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, fight the good fight of faith. We're, we're on a military offensive here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14 is one of those times we've all got to say together. Here we go. Let's say together. Uh, but thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumphal procession. Uh, 
all these letters in triumphal procession. Very interesting triumphal procession. In one word in the Greek, it's a triumvuo. That's, that's the word. And it, it, it's the military parade that comes right on the, on the heels, right on the heels of having a big victory uh, for, for the cause. And we're celebrating that. So God is always leading us into battle for the cause of Christ. And there's going to be victory. So firstly, community. Community, that's the family. Uh, secondly, the cause. We're in God's army. Uh, thirdly, uh, the bottom one there, corporation. Uh, we're, we're in business for God, and the Bible has so much to say about leadership and administration. In fact, God wrote the book on it. See, I've done the university degree in this, and I'll tell you what, uh, they looked at the Bible for, 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 for leaders, for corporate leaders. They're looking to the Bible. They're looking at characters like Moses and Nehemiah and Joshua. And they're the examples. It's doing any university. The Bible, God wrote the book on this stuff. Uh, but the organizational side of the church is something that the majority of people know very little about uh, or have no idea about or didn't even know there was one. Let's rock up on Sunday. They just just go on Sunday. So so many people wouldn't even know that there is a business or organizational side of the church. I just want to tell you about a Greek word. It's episkopos. It's variously translated in your Bible. Uh, sometimes bishop, sometimes pastor, sometimes overseer. And indeed, the word means oversee. That's what it means. And, and, and you know why the the key leaders of churches are called overseers? See, they have oversight not only of people, uh, but of organization and administrative structures within the church. 1 Timothy 3 1 Whoever aspires to be an overseer uh, desires a noble task. Uh, 1 Timothy 5 17 The leaders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor. Direct, direct the affairs, oversee the administration. Romans 12 8 talks about the gift of administration, or in some of your translations, the gift of leadership. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, in the Revised Standard Version, talks about the gift of administration. And the, the, the Greek word that's translated administration right there in 1 Corinthians 12 uh, is kubernesis. And it's the steersman. That's, that's, he, he's the one who's steering the ship. That's who this administrator is. And, and so, uh, you know, we, 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 we do gifts and shape classes in this church to discern what your gifts are. And uh, I, I've done those classes. I've done them over the years. And I've got to tell you that the, my top four gifts have been discerned again and again and again. Leadership number one, teaching number two, administration number three, and number four evangelism. And I tell you, when you've got someone who's steering the ship with those gifts, sooner or later they're going to pop up in others. That's just the way it is. You get on board with that. I am called to steer this ship. I often think about that for folk who don't come regularly, and I think come once a month. I'm steering the ship. We may have sailed. <laughs> I remember when we used to be over in uh, Crompton Road, right up building here, and uh, and someone turned up like six months after we left, because that's how often they came. We were gone. They thought we were going to business. We just moved. And chances are one day we'll move again. We get real big. We're just broke. Bye. 50 acres somewhere. We'll just move. We'll sail overnight. <coughs> no, you won't sail a ship this big overnight. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> so people say, well, what do you do? I remember when Amanda Austin first came to work in the front office, and some people that sort of knew her from, said, well, what do you do there all day? Well, well Sam said, you have business. She's the front office girl. What do you do, Gordon? I run the organization. We have eight paid staff in this church, you know. Someone needs to keep all online, you know. <laughs> Someone needs to coach them and lead the team. And so I want to tell you a little bit about overseeing, about coordination and care for the church. Uh, 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 when it comes to leading and managing this church, first of all, there is risk management and compliance. Some of you don't know what that means. Uh, risk management means that people can sue us if we don't get it right, particularly in kids' ministries. But also, if you trip over our curb, as someone did once, coming to one of our ministries, fell right over the curb out there, tripped over, and landed on their face and knocked all their front teeth out. Uh, incident report straight away, because they can sue you. If you mess up with their kids in kids' church, we can be sued. Probably not you, but we. So there's risk management and compliance. When we talk about compliance, 
Government's got a whole lot of standards in place that we must comply with or they'll shut us down. So the leader of any organization needs to ensure that the organization complies with all government standards uh, in issues of risk management. And uh, uh, that's true of any organization. That's particularly true of this one or any other one, uh, this one called the, the Baldos Church. When it comes to child care, I, I know a lot of people, when we did the ministry expert, they put down, I want to do child care. Well, every person that serves in any area of children's ministry, you just can't rock up on the day. Now, that's illegal. Uh, you need to have a police clearance. Because we don't know who you are. So you need to get the police clearance and you need to have completed the child safe seminar. You just thought you'd rock up. What's the church? No. When it comes to finance, you know, there are protocols that need to be led, that need to be managed, need to be overseen, need to be put into practice, accountability structures maintained for the collection of monies, just right there, uh, for the accounting of monies, for the banking of monies, for the spending of monies, for the auditing of the spent monies and the collected monies. And all these, when it comes to insurance, we have a huge bill here. Uh, for sure. There, there are building insurances, there are workers' comp insurances, there are public liability insurances, and the list goes on and on and on. When it comes to property, there is property maintenance. Uh, there is property development that needs to be planned out and thought about years in advance and managed. And then there are taxes. I love the taxes. There, there are income taxes. And then there is the GST, and I quite like GST, part of this organisation. We pay GST. Guess what? We claim it back. So when we're in a building program, we're kind of in a fool's paradise for a little while, because the tax department are paying us. We do quite well when we're in a building campaign. So when you get to the other end and you haven't managed that well, you're suddenly in a black hole. <coughs> so I'm just talking about management here. And then there is the mission of the organisation. Why we exist, what we're called to do. And both paid staff and volunteer staff make it happen. And whenever you have staff, there needs to be leadership and management in order to have a team, a cooperative endeavour. Uh, you know, we have four core ministries in the church. I say this again and again, and everyone gets that because they want to have their little ministry. It's not one of the core ministries. There's four core ministries. One is worship, what we do here Sunday. It's a core ministry. Uh, second one is children. We love our kids. We had prayer meeting this morning. We prayed for our kids and the, the blue shirt workers for this morning. We ought to pray for them all the time. They're there. And they, they jump through the hoops, got the police clearance, done the child safe seminar, been skilled in doing these things. The second one is children. Third one is youth. We, we love our youth. And it's a big ministry. You come here on a Friday if you don't know about it and see what happens here on Fridays. And, and if you're not into youth at all, they'll frighten you. You'll be scared. You'll need a coffee after that. And, and, and the fourth one is connect groups, small groups. We, we want to we see God bless us through small groups. So that there, there are, and there needs to be coordination on all this so that we're all going together the same way so that, that the individuals are not doing just what is right in their own eyes. John Maxwell, leadership guru, says, the team doesn't win the championship if its players are working from different agendas. And we need to be so intentional about being a team and working as a team. And if we run that one naturally, water flows downhill naturally. We're going to make it go uphill. And you can make it go uphill. Lara and I lived on the 15th floor of a, a block of flats in Hong Kong for five years. On the 15th floor, we, when we turned the tap on, the water came out. Water can flow uphill, but doesn't happen naturally. Water flows downhill. And cooperation is one of those. You have to be so intentional about this. And I believe I'm a point of intentionality.